My original wait time started April of 2019 with the new calculation for Black Americans. My start date would have started 2015. I could have been had a kidney already. Jasmine Evans is one of many Black Americans who moved up the kidney transplant list after her doctor used a new formula to recalculate her kidney function. This new formula replaces a long-standing equation that adjusts the results according to a patient's race. But why would someone's race affect their position on an organ transplant list? Here are the basics. Clinical algorithms are tools that help healthcare providers make decisions. They're used to diagnose and treat patients, calculate a person's risk, and predict outcomes. These algorithms can take many forms. They can involve a flowchart, a simple equation, or a complicated AI model. Some algorithms are adjusted to consider a person's race. If the person is black, for instance, doctors may add or subtract a point or multiply the score by a certain amount. But clinicians and researchers are now finding that these race corrections might be delaying or in some cases preventing patients from accessing care. This has been especially true for people of color. Why adjust for race in the first place? We would love if the data that we collected was a digital twin, an identical twin that perfectly matched to the real world um, experience, but it doesn't. It's got holes, it has gaps, including um, when it comes to different underrepresented groups. And so in the past, what would often be done is there'd be some sort of unexplained prediction in the algorithm and race seemed to fit wonderfully in explaining why or correlate on why that particular model worked better if you included race. The problem is that having the same racial background doesn't mean that someone shares the same genetics or experiences. Using race as an input to a model is just kind of lazy uh, because we know that there are just so many different factors that drive that label of race, including social determinants of health, which even if you break up that term, social determinants of health, we're talking about socioeconomic status, we're talking about nutritional status, um, access to education and financial well-being. There's a lot of variables packed in there. America is locked in battle, waging war against novel coronavirus while fighting a disease that has plagued the country for centuries. While people have been calling out the harms of race-based algorithms for years, the COVID-19 pandemic and the racial reckoning after the murder of George Floyd in 2020 galvanized some in the medical community to take action and remove race from these tools entirely. Politicians even exerted pressure by calling upon medical societies to re-examine their race-based algorithms and root out bias. Some people argue that race corrections can help deliver more appropriate care, but there are clear examples where race corrections ended up widening healthcare disparities. The kidney function equation is one of them. EGFR, or Estimated Glomerular Filtration Rate, is an algorithm used to calculate how well people's kidneys are functioning, and if necessary, inform their place on transplant waiting lists. EGFR is calculated based on how much creatinine people have in their blood. Black people's scores were adjusted based on studies that showed Black people on average had higher baseline levels of creatinine. Many doctors were taught that Black people had more creatinine because they had more muscle mass. A flawed assumption. To this day, doctors still don't know why Black people have higher levels of creatinine in their blood compared to other groups. What they do know is that Black Americans have higher rates of kidney failure and end-stage kidney disease than white Americans. Because there is this race correction, in which case the threshold for diagnosis for kidney disease was essentially made higher for Black patients compared to white patients. And so the proportion you know, those that were diagnosed with kidney disease and perhaps given early treatment, diagnosed with advanced kidney disease and um, made eligible for kidney transplant. All of these interventions were essentially delayed. It's going to be taken a really good scientist to calculate the impact of race corrected EGFR and how it's permeated all medicine. One little shifting of a threshold can have, you know, butterfly effect on its impact. Doctors started using the new equation in 2021, and transplant centers soon required their use, allowing Black patients like Jasmine Evans to get their kidney transplants sooner. 
So I got the call. It's time. I'm in the hospital getting ready for my transplant. Evans is getting her doctorate in African-American studies at Temple University and has been studying medical racism. When she got the letter informing her about the adjustment, Evans says she wasn't surprised. So from my research, I knew that um, racism within the medical field was a real and prevalent thing. Um, but then to find out that, in fact, even my own personal health journey has been affected by this medical racism that I'm studying, it was just, it was a lot to take in um, in that moment. I was enraged, I was hurt. Um, and at that point, I just felt like everyone needed to know um, what was happening to me because I knew for sure if it was happening to me, it was happening to a lot of other people who looked like me. Hi guys, it's me. I know I've been kind of MIA lately. Through her TikTok, Evan says she is connected with people who are going through similar experiences. To see that time had literally been stolen from people um, and then also to know the fact that there have been people um, who have passed away um, waiting for a recalculation that would never come for them, um, it maddens me in a lot of ways. So where do we go from here? Since 2020, some other medical specialties have revised or eliminated their race-based algorithms. Obstetricians took out the race correction in a formula used to predict the success of a vaginal delivery after a C-section. The American Thoracic Society said that race would no longer be a factor when calculating lung function. And the American Academy of Pediatrics retired its race-based guideline for determining urinary tract infections in the youngest children. Hightower and others are working to build algorithms that are fair and accurate for everyone, regardless of their race. Race alone shouldn't be used as a correction in an algorithm, but really looking at the root cause. And so getting to that ground truth as inputs actually makes much better models. And then when you're evaluating how that model performs across populations, that's when using demographics are really helpful because then you can see, is that model really working for everyone? You're then evaluating the benefit of that model for each, say, demographic group. There are still countless other race-based algorithms out there, and clinicians and researchers are still trying to answer these hard questions to make sure everybody gets access to the care they need. My colleague Ushali McFarling and I wrote a series examining the impact of race-based algorithms on patients. To read more, go to statnews.com or visit the links in the description box below.